<laughs> no. Hello and welcome to the INET Live Control Room. It's 1500 hours Pacific time. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> It's 1,500 hours Pacific time, 2,200 hours GMT, and this is the inaugural broadcast of INET Live. <laughs> I'm Christopher Munz Mikkelin in the main control room. I'm Dale Black in the INET Live Assignment Lab. And I'm Blair Day at the INET Assignment Desk. And over the next few minutes, we will be properly introducing you to the team of INET Live, the team that's made this broadcast possible. We'll also be taking you through a brief tour of the control room here. But first, it's been a long month and a half, which has been the duration of time needed to get this broadcast up and running. Here now is a look back on what we needed to do to get this broadcast going. As home broadband speeds have gradually increased and more powerful computer hardware has found its way into the hands of consumers, the number of people consuming television via the internet has increased exponentially. Internet TV is defined as the digital distribution of television via the internet, and it started off as a method for traditional broadcasters to deliver their content to consumers. Over the years, however, internet TV broadcasting has become more accessible to average people, and a quick search of any internet TV streaming site will, re will reveal hundreds of streams operated by individuals from within their homes. With the increasing prominence of internet TV, INET Online decided in the summer of 2012 to jump on board with the revolution and start a new 24-7 streaming service, INET Live. Um, we hope to accomplish, I guess, something that's, you know, just equally educational is entertaining. I mean, a lot of our programming is you know, serious, and as well as just completely off the wall. Mikhail Bush joined the INET team in 2009, and he was the first one to really get serious about starting a 24-7 broadcast. But I think ultimately the goal is that we have people who are, you know, even if they don't like our station or whatnot, at least they'll have the audacity to go and search for whatever they're looking for. And I think that's one of the major things is that is also an issue when it comes to television is that people are just not going on their own accord and seeking out what they probably would really enjoy or or knowing what they don't enjoy when it comes to television. So the idea was there, but now the difficult task of actually implementing that idea was before us, and the investigation into software packages began. Most internet TV streaming services offer a web interface that uses the Adobe Flash plugin to connect to a local webcam attached to the computer. These web interfaces are not suitable for 24-hour streaming, and Mikhail and I quickly came to the realization that a standalone software package needed to be used. Such a package was found in the video switching application VidBlaster. VidBlaster is a software video switching application that allows the user to stream live sources, including webcams and TV tuners, as well as recorded media stored on the computer's hard disk. VidBlaster also allows for the easy creation of on-air graphics and looped playlists for continuous broadcasting. While VidBlaster is great for controlling live sources and simple playlists, it is impossible to automate the application and schedule specific programs to air at specific times. It was at this point that the hunt was on for an automation application that could handle continuous, scheduled playback. It turns out that when one runs an internet search for TV automation software, a whole bunch of hits come up. Unfortunately, most of the results uh, consisted of buggy or complete crap software, or software that didn't offer a trial version, which, from my experience, buying software without first trying it out is always a mistake. Eventually, the realization came that a homebrew solution needed to be used, and I eventually settled on a combination of Windows Task Scheduler, VLC Media Player, and the VCAM Virtual Webcam Software. 
Using the rather convoluted method, VLC is scheduled to start playing a recorded broadcast at a specific time using the Windows Task Scheduler. The output of VLC is then sent to a virtual webcam created by the VCAM application. VidBlaster then receives the video stream from VCAM and overlays graphics before sending the resulting video stream to the internet via the Livestream Content Distribution Network. Certainly not the most efficient solution, but it works, and was much easier than trying to code custom automation software. iNet is primarily a provider of on-demand content, and as such, the amount of total original video that has been produced is just over 24 hours. Not very much to put on a continuously broadcasting stream. Because of the small amount of original programming, the executive decision was made to fill the vast majority of iNet Live's broadcast schedule with retransmitted news from a variety of international news agencies like Al Jazeera, NASA, Press TV, among others. Segments of time are reserved for original iNet programming loops, and the ability to go live at any time, day or night, is made possible through the use of VidBlaster. Using the rather obscure software solutions outlined in this report, and by filling the majority of the airtime with retransmitted news content, iNet has entered a new era in its broadcasting history, 24-hour live streaming. For more information about iNet's live stream, or to watch it yourself, visit our website at inetonline.ca. For iNet, this is Christopher, reporting. So now that you know a little bit about the background of the station, it's time to introduce the team that made this broadcast possible. My name is Blair Day, and I'm the newest member of iNet here at iNet Online Studios. Um, I'm originally from Edmonton, Alberta. I moved to Victoria, British Columbia five years ago. I'm an electronics technologist, and I'm currently working for a company here in town called First Light Technologies. Now let's hand it off to Mikhail to tell him a little bit about himself. Mikhail? Thanks, Blair. I'm Mikhail Bush. I'm currently a student at the University of Victoria, pursuing mathematics studies and art history at the Um, I also have music, which I've been doing some composition in there. Um, I've been collaborating with Christopher at um, since 2009 on Internet and some of the regular programs like the CBA News and whatnot. Um, also, I made the intro of the initial shit ass thing called Finale. Thank you, Mikhail. Um, well, as he said, I'm Christopher Munz Mikkel, and I am the founding member of INET, or at least the only founding member of INET who's left. Um, I started INET back in 2006 with just a single YouTube channel, and it sort of expanded and snowballed into this live broadcast that we've got today. So I'm I'm pretty excited to be here and be doing this. Um, things I enjoy doing, I like programming in PHP, I like uh, building simple websites, I uh, enjoy listening to classical music, and I'm also a ham radio operator, so I enjoy talking on the ham radio to people all around the world. I'm also an electronics technologist, I'm going back to school in September to do some uh, computer networking courses, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all the main things that are about me. So now that you know a little bit about the team, it's time to show off our control room. So Chris is standing by right over there to do that. Chris. Thank you, Blair. Uh, so this is our basic control room we've got. Um, two monitors. The control room is mainly software controlled. We've got a Mac mini computer, which is our, our main computer that runs everything, running Windows 7 Professional. Um, let's just take a quick look at the software we've got here. Uh, as you can see, uh, VidBlaster is the main program that we use, uh, as I showed you in the video. Um, we've got four different camera modules. Three of them are physical cameras, one for Mikhail in the studio there, uh, one for Blair Day on the assignment desk, and one for myself uh, here in the studio, as you can see. Third one is just a screen capture so I can show you what's going on. We've got video overlays so we can turn on and off our live uh, graphics logo. Um, we can play back recorded media if we need to. Uh, as you saw at the beginning of the broadcast, and we've got this streaming module which uh, allows us to send our video out to the live stream content distribution network um, so that uh, third parties can actually uh, view this stream without uh, destroying the internet connection here at my house. Uh, so that's a brief tour of the control room. Uh, not much, but uh, hopefully we will be expanding the control room as things start to kick off and get a little more popular on the INET live end. 
Mikhail? Well, that's all about what we have today at our first ever uh, premiere of Minus Live uh, studio episode. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, as well as recommended uh, pro uh, programming or programming that content that you made yourself, you can contact us at our uh, iNet website at inetonline.ca.